What is the hottest new small molecule in RCC? And we have asked Emilio uh, Calver from Adit to, uh, to answer this question. Please. Thank you very much, John. Uh, yes, in the next uh, 15 minutes, I will be talking on this topic. Uh, what is the potentially best new molecule in kidney cancer? I will be talking not only on small molecules, but also on monoclonal antibodies. And I will be excluding on purpose the targeted immunotherapeutic agents, because uh, these have been already reviewed yesterday by Mark Dermot. So as you know, uh, we uh, have currently uh, therapeutic agents that target multiple alternative pathways that are involved in kidney cancer, and uh, these are currently under investigation. And this is uh, because in spite of the uh, fact that uh, all the drugs are ideal for all the patients according to our prior colleagues, uh, the approved treatments are not curative, the median overall survival remains suboptimal, and the patients at the end of the day progress of the disease. Also, drug resistance is a major challenge for the available uh, uh, agents that are BGF-targeted drugs or mTOR inhibitors, and in addition, we have a lot of off-target effects <clears throat> that can occur with the BGF-targeted therapies and uh, make it difficult for the patients to, to, to have this, these drugs because of clinically relevant toxicities. So uh, the way that we are developing the novel agents in kidney cancers can be uh, grouped in, in two different approaches. <clears throat> On one hand, we have uh, uh, the potential of trying to develop more selective BGFRTKIs, meet to drugs, uh, trying to get less toxic agents, and potentially uh, more active. And here we have the paradigm of Tibosanif, that BGFRTKI that have not been approved, but it is interesting to comment on that, uh, to explore that concept. And then we have uh, drugs that are uh, approaching or targeting different targets in the search of more activity. And the targets that are uh, being uh, more uh, intensively explored in kidney cancer are CMET, TAI2, ALK1, endocrine inhibitors, and PI3K AKT mTOR inhibitors. And for uh, my talk, I will be grouping this into two different groups. The novel pure antiangiogenic agents, like uh, the, the ones that are here on red, Tibosanib, again, just to explore the uh, me 2 bfr tki failure paradigm. The CMET inhibitors, like cabosantinib or furetinib. Then the TAI2 inhibitor, regorafenib. And also the ALK1 and endocrine uh, inhibitor. And then I will talk also on uh, the other group of agents that are uh, novel PI3K-AKT mTOR inhibitors. So let's get started with the tibosanib uh, paradigm. As you know, uh, this is probably the most potent uh, TKI, BFR TKI that we have uh, currently uh, compared to the ones that are uh, available uh, from a commercial point of view. And there was a randomized pivotal phase three trial, the TIBO1, uh, comparing head-to-head -head in first-line therapy, tibosanib versus sorafenib, more than 500 patients, and those progressing on sorafenib were allowed to receive tibosanib uh, in a separate protocol. This is a positive trial uh, regarding the main primary endpoint, progression-free survival. You can see that with tibosanib, the PFS was the longest one that we have had in a randomized phase three trial, almost 13 months. It was statistically superior to the PFS of sorafenib, nine months. And also, we compare with the other two phase three pivotal trial for sunitinib and pasopanib that are approved in phase line therapy, it seems to be superior or at least comparable or not inferior to them. The issue was with the overall survival was not, was not the primary endpoint, and uh, you can see that uh, the overall survival percentage after one year was similar for tibosanib and sorafenib, about 80%, and similar also for the other two drugs that are approved, sunitinib or pasopanib. It is interesting to comment that only 15% of the patients on tibosanib received second-line therapy, and for sorafenib arm, almost two-thirds of the patients were having second-line therapy with tibosanib. So that might explain also this uh, lack of difference in this secondary endpoint. But which is very interesting from uh, our perspective is the very good uh, uh, tolerance profile that was shown for tibosanib 
with only 10-15% of patients requiring dose reduction, less than 20% of patients requiring dose interaction, which makes this drug a very easy drug to administer and also for potential combinational therapy. But at the end of the day, the regulatory agencies, the FDA, didn't uh, approve this drug because it is already a very saturated uh, field uh, with uh, four more TKIs already approved and because of some uh, problems in the design, the overall survival results, crossovers, etc., at the end of the day, this is reflecting uh, the need of not going for the similar me to uh, BGFR TKIs drugs or mTOR uh, similar drugs and try to be more creative trying to get new, really uh, novel uh, agents to the market. So as an introduction for the novel angiogenic uh, targets, uh, you can see that uh, there are uh, many different angiogenic, uh, proangiogenic factors that affect the angiogenesis process at different uh, uh, parts. The BGF, for example, is very important for endothelial cell activation, survival, proliferation, or migration. But there are some other proangiogenic factors important for basement membrane degradation, to formation, branching, and sprouting and also for maturation of the network of vessels like ALK1, endoglin, PDGF, S1P, or angiopoietins. And these are the targets of the drugs that are being explored currently in kidney cancer. Also important to, to understand is the concept of uh, the second angiogenic switch that we have with kidney cancer, that in comparison with the primary angiogenic switch that is dependent on the von hippel endowed uh, primary alteration, the second one is acquire resistance to angiogenesis inhibitors and tumor evolution with vascular embolization and produces and depend, is driven by some other proangiogenic factors like hepatocyte growth factor and the Siemens receptor, transforming growth factor, etc., that can be also target for our new agents in, uh, that are coming for kidney cancer patients. Some of the drugs are having uh, the tibosanib problem that are very similar to the ones that are already approved, like nintedanib, uh, linifanib, sedidanib. I will not talk too much about them, but I think that this is already quite uh, difficult for, for the pharma companies to get this type of drugs uh, approved by the regulatory agents because of the saturation of the market. And then I will talk with further extension about the CMET, which is a one target that is probably more advanced right now in kidney cancer regarding novel agents. The CMET is an important receptor tyrosine kinase that is uh, binded by the patocyte growth factor, which is its natural ligand, and by doing so, it activates different signaling pathways like the RAS, uh, RAP, uh, MAP kinase, the FEC1, the PI3K AKT, mTOR, and by doing that, uh, it is uh, activating cell proliferation, cell invasion, epithelial mesenchymal transition, cell survival. And uh, this uh, signaling through CMET uh, is activated sometimes in a constitutive way, but sometimes it's also activated by tumor hypoxia and uh, very important uh, acquired resistance to BGF targeted agents. And we have two drugs that are being uh, developed, cabosantinib and foretinib, that inhibit CMET in addition to BGFR2. Cabosantinib is probably the one that is most advanced uh, nowadays. The first data of activity, uh, we obtained them uh, from a phase one drug-drug interaction study that was presented by Dr. Chueri of 25 patients with heavily pretreated advanced kidney cancer with cabosantinib 140 milligrams daily you can see that the disease control rate at four months was very good, 70%, with different percentages of tumor regression for, from four to 63%, and a very interesting PFS of 15 months. It was well tolerated, being uh, the most uh, severe side effects, hypophorphatemia, hyponatremia, and fatigue, in less than 30, 20% of patients. And here it is more easily uh, seen the dynamic changes in tumor sizes for the 25 patients that were participating, most of them were having some degree of uh, decrease of the tumor in spite of being heavily pretreated. On this basis, there are two randomized trials with cabosantinib. One is the Alliance CalGB phase two study, first line therapy, comparing to sunitinib, the primary endpoint is progression free survival, 150 patients, and the data probably the results will have it at some point this year. And then there is a pivotal phase three study of cabosantinib 60 milligrams versus everolimus 10 milligrams 
in a progression to BFRTKI first or second line therapy. Very interestingly, here in the two randomized trials is that the dose of cabozantinib is less than 50% of the recommended dose uh, uh, in the phase one trials or the dose that is uh, actually approved for thyroid medullary uh, cancer. And this might be a challenge in order to demonstrate superiority of this drug because it is suboptimally dosed. Foretinib is also a drug that is inhibiting CMET and BGFR2 uh, potently, but also in less uh, potency, type 2. It is uh, 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 mainly developed for papillary kidney cancer, which depends on, on CMET in many times. And this phase two trial with 75 patients uh, was showing an overall response rate of 15% with disease stabilization of 88%. The tolerance was not that good with 30, 40% of patients with uh, severe fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, hypertension, and eight, 10 patients with pulmonary embolism. PFS, 10 months, and again, the dynamic changes in tumor size, uh, third, 75% uh, more or, or less of the patients were having some degree of decrease, and uh, independently of presence of met aberration germline mutations or in their absence as well. The next one is the gorafenib, which is a, a, a multiple uh, kinase inhibitor, BGFR, PDGFR, fibroblast, growth factor receptor, but also in a very potent way, type 2. Uh, there is a phase 2 for kidney cancer, uh, that was uh, presented by Tom Asen uh, with the graphenib, 160 milligrams per day. The primary endpoint was response rate. 50 patients were participating, and uh, only 10% of the patients were having disease progression. 40% were having objective uh, partial response. The toxicity was also a little bit hard for the patients. 70% uh, of them were having any type of grade 3 or 4 toxicity. One third of them were having severe or life uh, threatening harmful skin reaction, fatigue of any degree uh, in half of the patients, the same for diarrhea, alopecia, mucositis, mainly grade 1 or 2, but it was hard. Especially, there were uh, two patients out of the 50 participating ones with grade 4 cardiac ischemic events and two toxic deaths. So, this drug. Uh, it's not easy to administer, which is something that we don't see with colorectal cancer, for example. And finally, the inhibitors of activating like kinase 1 or en uh, endoglin uh, receptors. As you can see here, these receptors are members of the transforming growth factor beta superfamily. They are expressed on activated endothelial cells. And very interestingly, the ALK1 receptor loss uh, produces the hereditary telangiectasia syndrome because it is affecting the maturation part of the angiogenesis, the network of new vessels, mature vessels. From a preclinical standpoint, it has been demonstrated that sunitinib is synergistic with uh, the protein fusion of ALK uh, 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 fraction, cost and fraction. And the drugs that we have in the clinic are several. We have the protein, uh, fusion protein of ALK1 from Genentech and also from Acceleron that binds and neutralizes uh, the ligand of uh, bone uh, uh, MP9 and 10, which is uh, a TGF beta ligand. Also, we have a monoclonal antibody acting here against the ALK receptor, and we have also another monoclonal antibody against the endoglin receptor for a uh, track on a uh, biopharmaceutical company. All of them uh, are having good tolerance, anti-angiogenic activity. <coughs> and in kidney cancer, <coughs> the ones that are uh, having uh, some preliminary uh, evidence of activity and clinical data are the ones from Aceleron, the Lantercep, and uh, Tracon 105, in phase one, two mainly. Finally, the last uh, type of drugs, the uh, novel PSGK AKT mTOR inhibitors, which is a very important uh, pathway uh, in kidney cancer, as you already know. And the way to try to improve this uh, Rapalox is uh, through a better inhibition of the mTOR, inhibitors of different parts of the pathway, PSGK or AKT, and sometimes dual inhibition of these uh, different parts. These are non allosteric uh, inhibitors, they directly block the ATP binding sites in the PSVK mTOR pathway. And you can see here the ones that are in the clinic, the uh, specific inhibitor of mTOR complex one and two, 
the uh, inhibitors of PI3K, sometimes pan PI3K in ATP competitive way from Novartis, VKM 120 and Bill 719, allosteric inhibitor of AKT from Merck, which has been uh, suspended in kidney cancer because of toxicity. Then we have the ones that are more advanced, dual PI3K and mTOR kinase inhibitor for Genentech and from Novartis. And finally, the perifosin one, which is in the clinical arena from 10 years ago, <coughs> which is a PI3K KT dual inhibitor, and there are some data in phase two uh, studies. The ones from all these mTOR PI3K KT drugs that are a little bit more advanced is the pan PI3K mTOR inhibitor from Genentech. There is a randomized phase two trial with 80 patients comparing that with uh, Everolimus. And uh, to conclude, uh, uh, BIFR inhibitors and mTOR inhibitors are still the backbones of kidney cancer, but they are probably are their very best plateau as single agents. So we need to get new targets and new drugs, and very importantly, uh, we have to base this in understanding and overcoming the resistance uh, to, to these drugs. Uh, we can group them as novel pure antiangiogenics or novel PI3K AKT mTOR inhibitors that are that are acting not only on endothelial cells, but also in tumor cells. And from all these ones, the CMET BFR2 inhibitor, cabosantinib, is the most advanced ones between the novel drugs, again, excluding the T-cell modulators. Thank you very much.